The Dragonback Series by Timothy Zahn. Book Three Dragon and Slave. Chapter 18. Okay, Jack said, trying to keep his voice calm and casual. That's not so bad. Matter of fact, that might be the best way to get me out of here. Let them sell me, then I'll duck out on the buyer once we're off planet. I wouldn't count on that if I were you, Uncle Verge warned. Nor don't you think that your cook family has dealt with unwilling slaves before? Jack felt his throat tighten. You mean not just handcuffs or those control collar things they used on us on Sunrite? Uncle Verge snorted gently. Amateur stuff used by people in a hurry. No, I expect that your cook family will be more thorough. A lot more thorough. So you're telling me I'm in trouble? I'm telling you this whole plan was insane to begin with, Uncle Verge said flatly. I'm telling you it's time to give up, pull the plug, and get out while you still can. Jack stared at the picture on the display, his eyes tracing along the patterns of the stone making up the mansion walls. Big stones. Hard stones. As hard and cold and unfeeling as the people who lived within them. Even the mercenaries he'd dealt with had cared more about people than Gaze and the, and the Chakuk family did. What in space was he doing here anyway? Jack! Uncle Verge prompted. Come on, lad, it's over. Cut your losses and let's blow this pop stand. And what will we do then? Dracos asked. Where will we go for the information we need? Why, we should have started in the first place, Uncle Verge said. Well, dump this in Star Force's lap and let the professionals handle it. We've been through this, Uncle Verge, Jack said. We can't let anyone else know about Dracos. Uh, maybe we don't have to, Uncle Verge said. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but all we want is to keep Draco safe from whoever the Valaga have teamed up with. Mm, right? Jack frowned. He knew that tone of voice. There was some trick here. All right, he said cautiously. So... So we go to Star Force, Uncle Verge said, but we go anonymously. Pardon? Dracos asked. Anonymously, Uncle Verge repeated. We don't let them know who we are. I understand the word, Dracos said. They do not understand the logic. How can we convince them of the truth without revealing my existence? Ah, but we don't have to convince them of anything, Uncle Verge said. And that's the beauty of it. All we have to do is drop them an anonymous tip that some mercenary group is using Gen 90s to smuggle contraband. They get all hot and huffy and rush off to investigate. Assuming they believe us, Jack said, they must get a million anonymous tips a day. Even if they do believe, how does that help us? Dracos added. Easy, Uncle Verge said. We just watch over their shoulders while they investigate. They find our mercenary group, and there we are. Jack rubbed his cheek. On the surface, it sounded reasonable enough. Best of all, he could do it from the comfort of the SNA instead of from a dirty slave colony. What if they are delayed or are too slow? Dracos asked. What if they give up their investigation and we do not know about it? Nonsense, Uncle Verge scoffed. We'll be on them like white on rice. We'll know everything they do part practically before they do. And if we miss something important, Dracos persisted. We have less than three and one half months before the full refugee fleet arrives. We cannot afford to waste any of that time. That wouldn't be a waste, Uncle Verge insisted. Star Force knows what they're doing. No, he's right, Uncle Verge, Jack said. We can't afford to take ourselves out of the game. But we wouldn't be, Uncle Verge said, almost pleading now. 
And we can still poke around on our own if you wanted to. We could check with the people who watch Merc Groups or even go back to sorting through Gen 90 sales records. Jack shook his head. No, he said firmly. Firmly, but with a wispy smoke ring of regret floating around the words. He hadn't realized just how much he wanted out of this until Uncle Verge dangled the possibility in front of him. The timing's too tight to play games. Uncle Verge sniffed loudly. And exactly how much time have you wasted playing this slave game? That's different, Jack said, glaring at the computer display. It's here, right in front of me. I just have to figure out how to get at it. And then what? Uncle Verge asked. What if you do find the group involved? Are you and Draco's going to take them on all by yourselves? Mm? Them and wh however many of the Velaga have moved into the Orion Arm? Eh? Jack looked down at Dracos's head. We'll figure out that part when we get there. Of course, Uncle Verge said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Forgive me if I'm being difficult, but don't most professional assault teams do just a little more planning before hitting the beaches? Uncle Verge looked. No, oh, you look, Jack lad, Uncle Verge interrupted. Point one, you two can't stop the Velaga alone. Not a chance. Point two, you probably can't even find the Velaga and their allies alone. Tell me I'm wrong. Uncle Verge. And point three, Uncle Verge went on quietly. That seems to me that you've more than paid back your obligation to Dracos and his people. It's time for you to point him in the proper to the proper authorities and give him a hearty handshake and... Hold on a second, Jack cut him off. I agreed to help Draco save his people, remember? His part was to get me out of that jam with Braxton Universus, and he did. This is my half of the deal. Yes, I remember, Uncle Verge said. I also remember that he spent maybe three weeks on your problem while you have already put in a month and a half on his. With no end in sight, I might point out. Doesn't seem very fair to me. It didn't seem very fair, Jack had to admit. Especially since Dracos' part of the deal hadn't involved anything nearly as unpleasant as what Jack had had to go through, first as a junior mercenary soldier and now as a slave. The dragon wasn't even arguing the point, he realized suddenly. He was just lying there quietly against Jack's skin, waiting for the discussion to be over. Waiting for Jack to make, to make a decision. Jack felt his lip twist. Yes, he hated this. He really did. And Uncle Verge was right on all the other points, too. Even if he did manage to shake loose the data they were looking for, did any of them honestly think they could take on the bad guys all by themselves? Uncle Verge was arguing for fairness. Dracos, Jack knew, would argue on the basis of right and wrong. That keeping a promise was the right thing to do, whether it seemed like a good deal or not. But at the moment, neither argument mattered a rat's nest to Jack. What mattered was that he'd suffered through two weeks of slavery, and he was not going to let those two weeks go to waste. Come hell or high water or interstellar tax audits, he was going to get what he'd come here for. Fairness could go jump. The noble could our warrior ethic could go pole vault. It was Jack's professional pride that was on the line here. Yeah, yeah well, life never claimed to be fair in the first place, he told Uncle Verge, and I've still got a couple of ideas to try. Jack, lad! In the meantime, how about making yourself useful, Jack said. See what you can dig up on about 40-year-old Brunga computer systems. Uncle Verge gave a sigh. If you like, he said. But I would strongly, strongly, mind you, suggest that you reconsider. The minute they start getting ready for the sale, our chances of getting you out of there go way down. I'm not worried, Jack said, wishing that was actually true. Look, I've got to go. I'll talk to you later. He turned off the comm clip and returned it to his hiding place. And that was our bi-monthly argument with Uncle Verge about chucking this whole thing, he commented as he smoothed the soul back in place. I don't know why we have to keep going over the same territory this way. Decisions of ethics and behavior are not one-time events, Dracos told him. A person must renew such decisions each day. Sometimes several times in the same day. I suppose, 
Jack said. Seems like an awful waste of effort, though. Not really, Draco said. Each time you make such a decision, you grow stronger and more resolved. You become able to face even more difficult challenges. Great, Jack growled. Make the tough choices and they get tougher. For a moment, Dracos was silent. A tree without a quiet glade will break in gentle rains, he murmured. But one upon a windy coast can face the hurricanes. Jack rolled his eyes. Don't try to tell me that one comes from an old Kada warrior poem. Not a warrior poem, no, the dragon said. But I spent some time on the seashore once, and what I observed there... Never mind, Jack interrupted. I'm sorry I asked. Are you, you as you usually are with such things, Draco said, a hint of humor peeking through. What do we do now? Good question, Jack confessed. Let me think. For a long minute, he stared at the stubborn computer, shifting plans and ideas around in his mind like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. He couldn't get into the system. Therefore, he had to sneak in when the system was already up and running. That would be pretty tricky. Alternatively, he could be here when Gazin first started up the computer in the morning and read the codes as they were fed in. That would be even trickier. But then, as Uncle Virgil was, had been fond of saying, Tricky was the Morgan family middle name. Okay, he said, shutting off the computer. Time to switch to plan B. Which is... You'll see, Jack said, standing up and glancing over Gazin's desk. A small but distinctive paperweight caught his eye. Easy to carry and something Gazin would definitely miss. Perfect. Picking it up, he dropped it into his pocket. What is that for? Dracos asked as Jack started for the door. A souvenir of our visit, Jack said. Come on, we've got work to do. Where are we going? Dracos asked as Jack eased the door open a crack. To the kitchen, Jack told him, looking carefully outside. No one was in sight. I hope they haven't gotten started on breakfast yet. The kitchen? Dracos asked, sounding confused. Why? Jack smiled. I'm hungry. <laughs>